it is the grand finals of the June monthly qualifiers where Millis MMG will be taking on momentum shifters. And the winner will be getting $18,000 and a golden ticket to the Clash of Clans World Championship. Momentum shifters dropped to Tribe Gaming in the upper bracket semifinals. Just picking up that win in the lower bracket finals though shows that they really are taking this opportunity seriously. And I think that with this mass drag attack that Ahmed is starting with now, we're gonna see some sparks fly, Carbon. Yeah, with those dragons, gonna push their way right through this clan castle towards that town hall. And there is the overgrowth, which hits the eagle artillery. One of the shots went off, but it hits the dragons while under the warden internal's home. So it won't do anything as he continues to path his way to the town hall. Now sends in that royal champion to the bottom side of this base while the king is tanking that ricochet cannon. Remember, speed is the key here as he, he does find a tornado trap here, but the dragons, they secure the town hall as he's gonna be able to make his way over towards that eagle as it now, they'll be able to target the eagle after the overgrowth has disappeared. That is going to be a lot of damage onto those dragons, though, and that's going to force out the Eternal Tome from Akma, trying to protect him as best he can while he's right in this. Oh, no, that wasn't an Eternal Tome. That was the Phoenix picking the Warden back up. The multi-Infernos are going to stand in the core of this base, and that is a lot to deal with, especially since they were raged up, dishing out plenty of offense. He's got one more freeze to drop. He's going to drop it on the King and an Archonar, but oh, Spring Trap knocks those hogs out of the arena. It's going to be a triple, but he's taking quite a bit more time than he has in previous hits. The 72nd player is looking closer to a one minute and maybe 21. 22 second hit. Bottom side of the base might have cost him 10, 15 seconds just there. It's going to be an early strike into the core with a earthquake spell and a giant arrow to shoot straight through the center of this base, carving a nice chunk out. There are some builder huts in there that are going to start repairing. So Nacho wants to go as quick as he possibly can, crushing the right corner with that Barbarian King and setting up for these wow. Root Riders and Valks to smash through the two o'clock position, Carbon. I love the fact that he sent that King straight on in with a wall break and then a second wall break to the bottom so the King can go in and out of that compartment. And look how fast he cleared it, helped set a funnel for these Root Riders while they're making their way straight towards this monolith does have that overgrowth he's waiting to deploy he's not using it out of the town hall okay so he's going to use it towards the ricochet cannon and then he can continue to path to the town hall but he does have to either invest the freeze or i'm just wondering if he completely missed the town hall with the overgrowth there so now he's going to hit it and have to experience that town hall explosion and the poison <laughs> for these troops that's gonna hurt. On his favor though, Nachua did bring a poison spell. Very effective against the archers that came out of that CC. There's not a whole lot that's been shut down by this overgrowth, but they're gonna be walking over these walls anyways, encountering that enemy royal champion, taking her down. And it's a freeze on the last big clump of defenses. Raged up, royal champion stabs the last few down. And this is an easy three star for Nachua. Knocks it apart, but slightly slower than his opponent. The momentum shifters will hold a few second lead out of the first round of attacks, Garvin. Now Imran coming in with the dragons. And no giant hero arrow on the queen is he going to go E-Dragon Chain. Oh, I think he definitely wanted to take out that air defense with the E-Dragon. It doesn't look like he was able to successfully do that. Yeah, I think I saw a Tesla pop up there and kind of frustrate the chain value that Imran was looking for. Bad news for our MVP from the Mo Shifters from their previous match. Still, he's got a solid army marching through the bottom now. It's a big mass dragon force supported by that. Uh, Grand Warden ready to pop that Eternal Tome as soon as that damage starts coming in. Perfect time. He even catches the dragon on the top side, getting pushed back by the Air Sweeper. It still is invincible and impervious to all damage. Meanwhile, top side is going to be a Barbarian King smashing through the scatter shot and giving even more cover. Does get slowed down by an enemy Ice Golem, but it still looks like Imran is on a clear path. He does have to invest that freeze on the town hall, but unfortunately the dragons have avoided oh, no. it. And they are hitting his dragons and the warden here. And the warden oh. has the owl and it looks like the warden oh. is going down and everything's kind of ignoring the town hall as the RSC does have her ability. He's gonna have to path his way back, but there's two multi-orchard towers. The super mini is coming from that left side siege barracks. Queen's going on in towards the core. But that's the this wall. It's going to come down to the wire. It is, it is, it is, it is. I don't think this town is going to go down. Oh, wait, the super minions. Hold on, we got some super minions. The Archer Queen's still pretty healthy. She did have the healer puppet, so that should be able to keep her up. The super minions steal massive damage oh! and drop the rockets Ooh! right on top. Wow. Three store after all for Imran. He's going to have to get through this wall to deal with that final clan castle. 
and that's gonna buy Milicene MG some precious seconds that they did need. Momentum shifters were ahead by four seconds overall before this attack, and so holding off with that wall is great news for them. This is coming up close to a two-minute attack, a very, very slow one for a grand final match, Carbon. A minute and 51 seconds would put this at a tie, and we can certainly expect that he could do it even faster than that. Standard complemented equipment for the heroes so far. He's gonna use an earthquake and lightning right in the core of the base. And a giant arrow to take out even more. He's holding on still to a few free spells and rage spells to go fast on his own and slow down enemy defenses. Spread out heroes as well, Carbon Finn. He is working really hard on the funneling to start out this attack. Yeah, that king is pushing his way directly into the eagle. There is a headhunter that is slowing this king down quite a bit. So he is investing that freeze as the wooden eternal tome goes off to protect those root riders. But the queen, she charged her way to the town hall to secure it. So the root riders and Valks don't have to worry about getting hit by the town hall poison. And he doesn't have an overgrowth, which won't slow him down at all as he continues to push right on through. Sneaky Headhunter made her way into the Barbarian King and provided even more value for that queen charging in the top corner. She got the first star to prevent any sort of two-star disaster. And with the third one coming up just soon after, Tryhard is pumping his fist so happy that this went exactly according to plan. Just past the one minute mark. It's looking like a one minute and 10 second finish for Tryhard, putting them way far ahead in the lead on time now. Momentum Shifters doing a one minute and 16 or shorter on all three of the remaining attacks. That is a very fast average that you're going to have to accomplish. But we're seeing now Skeleton Spell out in front onto that monolith to provide the protection and distraction so the king can move his way into there. Doesn't have a jump spell, so investing wall breakers so he can get extra spells to push his way through the core. I really like how he's using that as the warden ability is going to protect these root riders. Going to have to probably pair in a poison spell. There you go for that clan castle wow. as he's going to overgrowth that straight up core of the base. Fantastic timing. Leaves that multi-target Inferno out so that his attacking troops can take that out and won't have to worry about it as they swoop through in the backside. Barbarian King just smashed through the top and upper left compartments of this base and using that gauntlet uh, early gigantically just demolishes everything in its sight. Took down a skeleton trap on its way as well. One less thing for Leo to have to worry about as the Root Riders path around the bottom side. We do get the overgrowth wearing away maybe a little bit sooner than he was hoping for, but still he's got that free spell ready to shut down those defenses. Super long range on the super minions, pulverizing that town hall and going in for the kill shot. It's a three star in one minute and 12 seconds for MOS Leo. Super fast and exactly what the momentum shifters were looking for to try to narrow that time gap. As Temper is not going with Root Riders, he is pairing in the giant arrow with the dragons here. This is the sort of setup that we heard from Itsu as being indicative of a world-class team. Being able to swap out your position on the lineup and not always have to go first, but being able to go third, fourth, or even fifth if you're trying to end things off with a bang. Teamper is a world-class player to be sure, and he must have been slotted in this spot uh, by intention of the uh, captain from Millis team to try to make sure that he can get exactly what they need and when they need it. Battle Blimp going directly for the Town Hall is going to be able to grab that first star early on. Balloons are going to get caught in a tornado trap and do get exploded there, but uh, it looks like they will be able to continue pushing through. Freeze up on the top side now as he's already spent his Grand Warden's Eternal Tome to try to protect these dragons on the entry point. A lot being dropped super fast here, Carbon. Yeah, with that Warden protecting the dragons over there, it lasts long enough to continue through, but the one multi over to the left side is doing a bit of, it's a, kind of a problem there as he's got a handful of multis and multi-archer towers, but he still has that Royal Champion ability. And by the time is the ticking here as he pops the RC ability to the bottom, moving through that one multi-archer tower to the left, the Queen helps to push through wow. now, but she's going for a wall and Temper is indeed getting that three star and it is looking really good here for Millicene MG. He spent so much in the early phase of that attack, I was worried that the collapse at the end was not gonna be enough damage to overcome the defenses. Sean is the next one to try to make it happen against Kingsman. He's bringing the Root Riders, only five of them this time though, and even more DPS to try to smash through as quick as possible. 
jump spell even to support probably a Barbarian King charge. He's going to waste no time at all as his fingers are flying across the screen, doing everything he can to get the picture-perfect taps that he needs to execute a lightning-fast three-star charge, Carbon. Yeah, with those Root Riders coming straight to the bottom side, that jump spell was supposed to be for the King, but unfortunately he went around! And he's not going to go into the Ricochet Cannon, but... Oh, he's coming back! He doesn't know where he's going! He's going to go back out! Nah! <laughs> Yep, he keeps going out of the base and in. He should come back. Oh, my. As the overgrowth is on the backside of this base here. As he did pop that Warden Eternal Tome. But we've got that Siege Barracks on the far left. As the Ice Golems are now coming over to his main troops. Look, just that little dance with the King and the Queen on the right side corner is going to completely neuter his chances at getting that big smashing victory as quick as he really needed. We're approaching the one minute mark and he's barely got 60% of the base down. This could still be a three star and it looks like a solid attempt, but he is really running into a lot of problems, not just with time, but also base management. There's a lot of defenses that are big and scary, still holding on. The monolith at the top side requires a freeze. He does have the world champion hasted up and ready to smash through the end of it, but this is only going to be a typical victory when Sean really needed an out of this world three star destruction. A one minute and 24 second attack from the momentum shifters keeps their average time within contention. Can Kingsman get it here with the Root Riders and Valkyries? He does have the overgrowth and a jump. We're going to be seeing the King utilize the jump. Hopefully the King goes in the proper compartment here and he doesn't run around like some other attacks. Kingsman starting off with the king and queen on the right side corner gives him a jump spell and they won't be doing the dance around that we saw in that previous attack. He's going to be going straight for that core. Archer Queen supporting over there as well to provide additional funneling and make sure he goes exactly where he wants him to go. Kingsman also dropping that Grand Warden up at the top side to support the Root Riders. We see that Royal Champion already getting great work done as she's going to stab down that Eagle Artillery on the top left side. No problems at all so far as he moves his way into the core. He does get slowed down a little bit with the Tornado Trap spinning him around, but he drops the Overgrowth spell. Does not nab that multi-archer tower in the very core. Not sure if that was intended or not, but it's going to allow the uh, Root Riders to take it out as they rage on into the center, Carbon. And he did pop that Queen ability off to the right. She's going through the monolith. Root Riders have passed through around the town hall. They will come back, and the Queen looks like she is actually still live to the right side. He decides a wall break over there to allow the Queen to continue her way into the multi, but he does not have the RC ability. She is going down here. Down goes the RC, but he's got some Velks. Root Riders come back to the core. Parry in a rage and a freeze there. Town Hall is frozen, and he's moving his way right on in. And Kingsman is delivering a three-star here. They are one attack away from getting a golden ticket. But here we go with the Root Riders and an overgrowth. Going to come in with that King. Going to path him in towards that Town Hall. Compare in that jump spell, but that king, it looks like he's walking around. Oh, he does not go into the wall break. That is so tough to deal with. And facing off against a monolith in that left compartment to have to try to knock down. It is just pulverizing these poor Root Riders. A quick timing on that Eternal Tone will protect the Valks that were trying to charge in, but the CC pull has begun. Ice Golem's coming out, and they are going to be slowing down the army. More bad news for Zekin, who wanted a quick hit and no problems at all. He is going to be able to jump over the interior wall with the Barbarian King smashing his way through, but that's a lot of damage coming in from the Town Hall now. That is going to be uncontested as those Root Riders were frozen carbon. Yeah, with the freeze towards that multi-target Inferno, we got the Super Barbs all around the edge to help continue to take out those buildings and the defenses as the Royal Champion Hurt ability has already been popped. The one Rage spell left and a freeze continuing. But those Root Riders at the top side are taking a lot of damage, and unfortunately, oh, this one doesn't even, doesn't even look like Hawk will even have to triple at this point. No, he's holding his head in his hands, just cradling himself, trying to hope beyond hope that a miracle could happen for these troops to be able to power through. But it is not looking likely at all. That Eagle Artillery has just been pummeling the entire time. And without any way to crack into any of these corners, without having the last and final core decisively finished off, 
Zeken just has to hold his head high and hope for a defense against Millicene MG. You hit the 89 and you are victorious and you get a golden ticket with the earthquake straight into the core. We have the queen and look at that pops the queen ability to take out the core. But what I found crazy first, the queen targeted the right side, then turned and hit the building and was able to use the arrow after the fact. And that is so hard to do as now pushing the Rue Riders straight to the bottom side, multi-target Inferno. Hawk has got such an expert strategic mind at display here. He can switch off his strat as needed as the fifth and final attacker to try to make it happen any way his team needs. He is going for that triple as those Root Riders are ready to storm into the core compartment, targeting both of those scatter shots, and he really wants to take them down as quickly as he can, getting frozen up and slowed down just a little bit, but they are going down one after another, Carbon. Yeah, with the Root Riders into the core, that Town Hall is... Under the overcrow spell, still has a world champion ability. A rage, a freeze, moving his way around, and the queen will be able to help go for the tunnel after the fact. The town hall is still there. Finally, now the overgrowth disappears, drops a rage, pops the RC ability, and congratulations to Millicem MG, as they will be the third team to be getting a golden ticket. And we will be seeing them later in the Clash of Clans World Championship Finals. The newly minted golden ticket winner will be competing in the World Championship. My first question, Kingsman, is how do you feel? We feel crazy, to be honest. We, we believed it because we worked so much for this. But finally get it after one year where we worked uh, pretty hard and didn't get it. And this year we finally have it, so that's amazing. We are so proud. Oh, you should be proud. Congratulations. And you you won this golden ticket. And last month you had the heartbreak where you got eliminated and you didn't get any tickets. So what did you guys do? Did you do anything in particular different for, and learn from last month going into now to be able to be successful to get that golden ticket? Yes, definitely. So we changed uh, a lot of things. First, it was uh, how we tried to uh, to have an attack order, like uh, uh, we used to have uh, two fast hitters, which is Temper and uh, Triad, even if uh, Natural went uh, quick. And uh, after I go Force and uh, Mammoth Lost, so that worked pretty well. And also what we did um, very well, I think, is that uh, we tried to found a new approach, different approach, which is pretty hard to bait and to stop. So we didn't choose the all to, uh, this weekend, but it was enough to qualify. And I think we, we did pretty well in offense and that made the difference. Um, Yeah, you got perfect wars in all three of your rounds. I think that that is an amazing offense. The defenses have been able to hold as well, though, against momentum shifters. You just held off with a two star and 88%. Uh, but it seemed to me that maybe the most exciting moment for your team was the victory over your longtime rivals, Tribe. Can you tell us a little bit about what was going through your minds after the end of that war? You knew you were going to be advancing to the grand finals from the upper bracket. Yeah, definitely. We know that Tribe is a very difficult opponent because they are so strong all over the years. But yeah, uh, after this war, to be honest, I remembered a bit the first golden ticket of last year because we were into the same situation and Navi won the two wars after. So I told my teammates to stay calm because we know it's impossible to lose. But yeah, we, we played very well on final also. And uh, to be honest, I think we deserve it all over the weekend because yeah, even if we perfect map uh, all, uh, all uh, wars, we also did great tanks, even if we secure a bit on the last attack sometimes. And yeah, we, we defend into all wars also. So, yeah. Totally deserved, and you guys put an unbelievable performance on. We all loved it. And I'm curious of what's your thoughts of, since we know that the hard mode has come out, and with the new troop, the Druid, have you guys been testing the hard mode? Are you excited for it? And do you really look forward to that later towards the end of the year in the World Championship? Yeah, we are very excited about it because, uh, yeah, for now, the game is pretty easy, so we have to play time. Because for now, we didn't test uh, anything since uh, the qualifier was uh, in normal mode. 
So we didn't want it to be uh, like uh, disturb a bit with this mod. And same for the Dread, we didn't test since it was uh, banned for this weekend. Uh, Kingsman, I know that your team was the only squad this month to get perfect wars in all of your matches. But I think something else that really deserves mentioning is that your team was the only squad that prevented a perfect war against you in every match. There was no team that got 15 stars against you in this month. And so can you tell us a little bit about your base building strategies? Maybe who is responsible for this amazing defensive performance? Okay, so yeah, we we had a lot of person which help us. So I can't say uh, all the names because there is too much. But yeah, mainly into the team, uh, it was Temper, Beat, Ryard, and uh, Mammut, which built most of the bases. But then we, are, we had the help of a lot of builders, a lot of other pro players, which help us um, to, uh, to scout the opponent, to, uh, to try to predict them, things like this. So yeah, also I think it made the difference because into the two last months, we worked uh, a lot for this breeding, but not like this. I think it was more efficient this week because yeah, we tried the different things and it worked pretty well. So yeah, very happy about it. Do you have any final words, any thank yous before uh, signing off? I want first to thank all my teammates and uh, especially uh, Mahmoud, because to be honest, he deserves more than me to be here. He's like uh, the natural captain this year. He managed a lot of things. He's doing pretty good. And yeah, finally, I want to thank um, all the person which helped us this week. There is a lot. They will uh, recognize, recognize themselves, sorry. So yeah. And also our sponsor, uh, Millesim MG, which is with us since last year. So yeah, very happy to represent uh, them into World Championship this year.